Hello everyone, my name is Megan Linsky. I'm a postdoctoral research scientist here at the Connecticut Agricultural Experiment Station. And today I'm going to be talking about integrated tick management project we've been working on to control the black-legged tick, also known as Ixodes scapularis, and some of you might even know it as the deer tick. This study is currently taking place in Guilford, Connecticut, throughout seven different neighborhoods. As you can see here on this map, they're all geographically distributed throughout the town. Um, we have a total of 81 properties that are participating. And the intent of this study is to evaluate an integrated approach to tick control. So rather than just having one application of a pesticide or looking at one specific host, we're looking at combinations of them. Um, so we have um, different, uh, different treatment types. So we have host-targeted and non-host-targeted treatment types. Within host-targeted, we have two different treatments. The first one is a deer four poster feeder, um, which I'll talk about in the next slide. And the second one is also a rodent bait box, so targeting two of the major host species for the black legged tick. And then for non host targeted, we have an entomopathogenic fungus called Metarhizium anisopheli, or also known as MET52, which is a naturally occurring soil borne fungus uh, that um, attaches and kills ticks. The MET-52 product itself is practically organic except for a petroleum distillate that it's suspended in. So this is becoming more and more a popular choice as it's not a chemical product. So as I said before, we have host and non-host targeted um, treatments. So for the host targeted treatments, I mentioned that we have four posters and bait boxes. In the upper left hand corner, you'll see an image of what is our rodent targeted bait box. So if you were to open this up, you'd see inside that there are two um, feeding areas and there's like a little hallway that goes through the center. So mice or other small rodents enter, they go through the little hallway and they feed on either side. As they're feeding, they're coming in contact with this little wick that has fipronel, which is essentially the same thing that you put on your dogs and cats to treat them for ticks. Um, and so they make contact with this wick, the fipronil is distributed on their neck, shoulders, head, that sort of thing, and kills all the ticks that are on them. Then to the upper right hand corner we have our four poster feeding station and this specifically targets deer. There are other animals that will feed on this but the main intention is the white-tailed deer. So as you can see it is um, it contains two troughs on either side and then with on either side of those troughs there are paint rollers. So the large body in the center contains corn that distributes um, a ample amount for the deer to feed on in the troughs. They will enter the troughs through the top and their neck, head, shoulder, ears will all come in contact with the paint rollers and the paint rollers are coated in permethrin. So once they make contact with that and it rolls on their neck, head, shoulders, it'll kill all the ticks on contact. So those are our two host targeted approaches. Um, and the reason we specifically target these species is because these are the species that um, ticks will feed on the most. And for white-footed mice, which are the rodent bait box target, they're one of what we call a competent reservoir species, meaning that they not only will uptake any pathogens from feeding ticks, but then they can also pass those pathogens onto other feeding ticks. So it's really important that we kind of stop that transmission cycle and the tick life cycle at these stages. But in addition, we also have a non-host targeted approach, which I mentioned before, which is the MET-52. And this is a spray. It's um, an acaricide, which means it's targeting ticks specifically. So we have a 100 gallon spray rig that we mount on the back of our truck, um, which you can see in our lower left hand corner here. And we go to everyone's houses and we spray around the perimeter, as you can see in the lower right hand corner. Um, we sp spray this MET-52 and then any ticks that try to come onto the property along that edge where we're spraying will come in contact with the fungus, the fungus will attach, and it will um, kill them. So these are all the different approaches that we're using specifically within this town and for this integrated study. So as I mentioned before, um, this is an integrated approach, so we're using combinations of these three treatment types. So as you can see from this table provided, and if you're looking at the neighborhoods that are corresponding with the combinations, you can see what we did at each of the properties. So for instance, in neighborhood one, there was no four posters applied, but there were bait boxes in MET-52. Um, and then you can also see the number of ticks that we sampled at each of the properties, as well as the rodent sampling that we did at all the properties. 
In addition, we also, throughout the scope of the study, this is a five-year study, we decided that in 2017 we did a baseline year sampling. So this is when we had no treatments applied to any of our sites. And we just wanted to see what the tick counts were um, at each of these locations and then see how over the course of the next couple of years, how those were impacted by the treatments or lack thereof. So in spring 2018 is when we decided to start our treat different treatments, which began with our four posters, which we administer in the fall and the spring of each year, specifically because they coincide with the seasonality of um, deer, not only when they're feeding, but when ticks are attaching to them as well. And then in summer 2018, 2019, and 2020, we implemented the other treatments consisting of the MET-52 and the bait boxes. MET-52 we typically spray in late spring, early summer to get ahead of that nymphal season. And then the bait boxes we distribute twice to three times throughout the summer as well. Um, and we will have one more year of the study in 2021. Obviously that hasn't happened yet, which is why it's not included in this presentation as of right now. So getting a little bit into the actual methods of this project, as we mentioned before, we had uh, four posters distributed in some of the properties. Any of the neighborhoods that were receiving four posters had three four posters distributed um, throughout the neighborhood. So this resulted in 12 four posters that were placed either in land trust, town, or private property. And then six neighborhoods received bait boxes at each property. Ten bait boxes were distributed around the perimeter. Uh, this equaled about 540 bait boxes that were put out in total. And then for MET 52, this was applied to nine properties within four different neighborhoods. And so that was about 36 different properties that were treated with MET 52. And applications were made um, in June of 2018, in May of 2019, and May of 2020. And then to kind of quantify the effects of these treatments, we did some sampling of both ticks and mice. Um, we live trapped mice at 63 different sites, and each of those sites we removed any parasitizing ticks to then later test for pathogen presence. Um, we also dragged for a host seeking ticks, so you can see in this picture in the lower um, right hand side of the slide. This is someone dragging a canvas sheet attached to a dowel. So you drag it for about mm, 10 meters or so, pick it up, you check it for any ticks and collect any ticks that are off of it. Um, this is just to see if host quest, questing ticks um, were reduced with any of these treatments or not. And this was typically done along the lawn woodland edge, but some of them also had an adjacent woodland dragging area as well, just to see what the effects were. So because we're in the second to last year of our study right now, we can only provide you with some preliminary results from our past three years, two of which were treatment years. Um, so based on the results from 2019 and the cumulative effects from 2017 and 2018, um, we did see some efficacy from our treatments. So in our graph to the left, you can see that we're looking at Borrelia positive captured white-footed mice. Um, obviously in our control, we have substantially greater percent infection versus um, any of our combination treatments. So with the four poster and bait box combination as well as our MET-52 and bait box combination were pretty similar at 20% versus the combination with all three treatment types, MET-52, bait boxes, and four poster was the lowest at 7%. And then when we're looking at number of ticks parasitizing our white captured white-footed mice, so this is our this is the graph to the right. Um, once again, you can see control is still substantially higher at 9.8 ticks per mouse versus um, any of our treatment types. Once again, they all seem to be pretty effective. However, um, the MET-52 and bait box combination is the least effective of the three with pretty similar results for our four poster and bait box combination and then the combination with all three treatment types. But I think the big takeaway here is even though there are some differences in um, not only infection of captured mice, but also parasitizing ticks on mice, they're all substantially lower than the control site. So this is really important that we're noting that they're all pretty effective, but there is some difference in efficacy based on the combinations. And then when we're looking at our host-seeking nymphal black-legged ticks, so once again, this is the portion of the study in which we went out and dragged the lawn edge as well as our woodlot edges and collected any ticks that are out questing. Um, and this is this graph is a slightly different order than our pre prior two, but you can see once again, control is definitely the highest. Um, and then it kind of descends from there with MET-52 bait box with 0.32, uh, four posters in bait box with 0.29, and then the lowest is once again, the all three combination. And this makes sense because you're not only 
attacking it from a host targeted standpoint and a non-host targeted standpoint, but you're attacking two of the major host species as well as a non-host target. So this is kind of what we predicted, um, but it's interesting once again to see that you're seeing a substantial reduction in the infection in mice, the number of parasitizing ticks, and the number of host-seeking ticks regardless of treatment type, but with the most effective strategy being the combination of all three treatments, which is four posters, MET52 spray, and the bait boxes targeting our mice. So once again, we're going to look at our big takeaways here. So as I said before, this is a five-year study. Um, we're currently wrapping up our second to last year. So all the data that you've seen thus far has been from 2019, but we're you know in the middle of it in 2020, and then we have one more year in 2021. Um, so we're not only looking at within-year uh, changes in um, infected mice and questing and parasitizing ticks, but also the cumulative effects of having those five years altogether, or rather our baseline year plus the four years of treatment. So we have completed the full two years of treatment. We've got two more to go. Um, and then we'll be able to give you guys the final results on how, um, like I said before, the within your treatment and the cumulative effects have influenced these ticks and the distribution of the pathogens that cause diseases like Lyme disease. However, already we're seeing some reductions. We saw, as you can see in those prior graphs, we have a reduction in infected mice. We have a reduction in parasitizing ticks, and we also have a reduction in host-seeking ticks. So this is pretty substantial for um, these neighborhoods and these residential homeowners who are reducing their risk or their chance of encountering not only ticks, but infected ticks. So I want to thank you all for coming in here and listening to my little talk about our integrated tick management project. Um, hopefully that you guys all learned a little something, you know, uh, about one of the projects that we're currently conducting and how it might benefit you in the future. That is the ultimate goal is that we can kind of get some of these findings on how to treat residential properties and neighborhoods and make lasting impacts on ticks and tick-borne diseases. So hopefully we'll be able to get these results out to you next year at the completion of this study and uh, you'll find it useful and hopefully prevent you guys from either encountering questing tick or reduce those chances of getting things like Lyme disease. So fingers crossed. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. I listed my email and phone number here on this last slide. Um, you can also contact any of my work colleagues, Dr. Scott Williams, or Dr. Kirby Stafford are available. However, I also just wanted to point out that we have a lot of in additional information on ticks and tick-borne diseases that you can get through our website. Um, or there are hard copies as well. Um, we have pamphlets on both regular native ticks as well as the Lone Star Tick, which is making its way up the coast. And then we have the Tick Management Handbook, which provides great background information on all these ticks and their associated diseases, their life cycle, and also management strategies for your own backyard. So thank you very much, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.